What's up guys? This is a waste oil shop heater product development video. We're going the, through the paces of bringing a product to market here. We need a shop heater that can burn waste oil without clogging up after a couple of hours. I already sell the Godzilla burner which is a lot smaller and cheaper but it's a little on the noisy side so this is uh, the process that we had to go through to come to where we're at now and I just wanted to do a quick recap and show you guys where I'm at with this build. We're not going to do any temperature control yet. This is the cheap version where you just light it with a propane torch and you just let it run. Probably going to try and sell this for like 400 bucks. So let's take a look at what we got here. You were looking at a preliminary test that gave me an idea of the dimensions required for the pre-burner. I think my needle valve might be restricting us a bit. Definitely hot. Plenty of heat to be had right there, but it needs some more air or something. And there it goes. The oil is starting to get too hot. The reservoir is now 250 degrees. And it just does not like that. So we are going to move the preheater back to where it was. show you what I mean by increasing the spark gap. Okay, we're pulling 65 watts. And that's the spark. You know, nothing to look at really. Not all that big a deal. But I'm going to turn the air on and uh, show you what happens and why uh, I was reluctant. I mean, yeah, it does make a much hotter spark with a bigger gap can't remember how much footage I got of the first one. Well, here we go. That's at 127 watts now. So we've doubled. Ignition test. All right, and this test, since all is lost, we're going to focus on whether or not the ignition does work with the higher airflow of approximately one cubic foot per minute. It's 4.43, we're just going to let this thing normalize, and by that I mean the oil temperature to reach its maximum. We started out at 78 degrees on the input oil temperature. That was too cold for electric ignition. So any electric ignition system would definitely need a little preheat bulb connected to the input line. I reduced the secondary air just a bit to bring the noise level down. I'm also interested in that aspect of this design. I have plenty of other designs that are way cheaper, but some shops require 
a very quiet heating system. You can't have a bunch of rack in the background. If you've seen any of my videos, usually when I bust this thing out, it's hitting 120. Another thing I want to share with you guys in this video is the concept of a flame target. In this case, I'm using a rotor. A thinner piece of metal would do better. There are a couple of reasons for having a flame target inside of a furnace. One being the infrared radiation that's emitted from the object that's being heated. If you just let the naked flame blow off into the chamber, a lot of those hot gases simply escape. A lot more of the energy will be radiated to the furnace walls if you have it hitting something that gets above 700 degrees. Right around 600 degrees, objects start to kick off a lot of infrared heat. Sometimes more than the flame itself. If you have a blue propane flame, a blue propane flame doesn't put off anywhere near as much heat as a yellow flame like this. But a thin piece of metal or something that will glow red hot from the flame hitting it will increase the performance. You may have seen this tactic being deployed on the old kerosene heaters where the kerosene flame is allowed to get that wire mesh on top of the wick red hot. That's kind of what the flame target does. It causes a piece of metal to glow. Glowing metal puts off more thermal energy than convection meaning by just touching, by the flame actually touching it. And you may have experienced, you may have experienced this phenomenon sitting at a campfire. When at first you start the fire, you've got some flames. Sure, it, it's warm enough, but when it gets down to the coals, the coals start to emit so much heat that it goes right through your pants and sometimes will run you off. You gotta back up from the fire because the coals are so hot. All right, so we came in right around nine minutes nine minutes and six seconds and that give us real close to 66 kilowatts like 65.9 something so we're right at about 66 kilowatts which is a fairly low setting and I don't know that I believe that I'm gonna test this again it's been about 10 minutes minutes in and the thermal couple is right there at the oil valve this is still in breadboard configuration in practice all these wires and stuff won't be hanging out of it and off of it like this this is just making it easy for me to test I'm not gonna go wasting a lot of time getting fancy during any testing it's just not appropriate so that's why they tell you never show your painting until it's done man everybody gets a little excited <laughs> they're all like man this painting really sucks <laughs> 